Moses and the mysteries of the Hathor Temple of Ancient Egypt. Was this a location where monatomic gold was mined? The Hathor Cave, the Temple of Hathor, where we find all these stelas of the ancient pharaohs of Egypt, was thought to be the area where white ash was found, perhaps the unique monatomic gold. In the southwest Sinai Peninsula, there's a site where ancient Egyptians mined the semi-precious turquoise mineral known as Serabit El Kadim. The great Sir Flinders Petrie discovered an ancient mining camp and a mysterious oil field. The cave was originally opened in by the third dynasty, the dynasty of King Sneferu, the builder of the red, bent, and medium pyramids but it was reopened in the 12th dynasty and was also used on the 18th and 19th dynasties. But Petri discovered something unique at this site with about 50 tons of mysterious white powder beneath its foundation, a kind of a pure ash that remains unexplained today. Now, if it had to do with burning, the ash would be black and not white, but this mysterious ash was white. Some say it was the white monatomic gold and that there once was an industrial center here to produce this material of white uh, monatomic gold which Pharaoh received for its incredible uh, proper healing properties and uh, properties that were supposedly beneficial for your mental capacity. Some writers still assume that this is Mount Sinai where the biblical Moses is believed to be the closest Hatshepsut advisor, the advisor to Moses, called Senenmut, another name for Moses, Senenmut. And this is where he received the Ten Commandments and also destroyed the golden calf, turning it into dust that was converted to food. In other words, he made the Israelites eat it so could this be a true story of somehow turning the calf into monatomic gold to be eaten in breads, in little loaves of breads, by the Israelites? Now, there's, I'll leave a link below for you for the video to, to hear if you'd like. It's a 20-minute video. It goes very slowly, and it's uh, narrated by a person from northern England, which has a very stiff and harsh uh, Yorkshire accent, it's a little bit difficult to get used to, but um, having to do with the uh, pharaonic monuments here, the according to the Egyptian uh, sites by the government, the pharaonic antiquities in South Sinai from the beginning of the Egyptian history, mining and smelting of copper led to an increased population in the Sinai Peninsula as colonizers began to move south and several sites have been found which were exploited for very early times. Systematic mining and quarrying began, began where the pharaohs sent expeditions to investigate this area during the early dynastic period. Gebel Magara, one of the earliest indications of pharaonic interest, inscribed in the east face of Gebel Magara, depicting Dynasty III, King Second Mecht, and uh, also Serabit El Kadim, that's what we're talking about here. One of the best known and most important archaeological sites in Sinai is Serabit El Kadim on a highland east of modern town of Abu Zanima. Turquoise, much prized by the Egyptians, turquoise stone, was mined here at least from 3500 BC. So that's well before the time of Moses, which is about uh, 1,500 BC. So uh, most inter intensively during the Middle Kingdom, as attested by inscriptions dating to the reign of Amenhep II and III. The Cave of Hathor, the Temple of Hathor, a rock-cut temple dedicated to the goddess Hathor, began here in the early dynasty, the 12th dynasty, is known as the Cave of Hathor, 
the goddess who is often named as Lady of the Turquoise. The earlier shrine was enlarged during the New Kingdom, mainly during the reigns of Hatshepsut and Tutmosis III, and thousands of votive offerings and artifacts have been uh, since recovered from here, including the famous set of statuette of Queen Tai, now in the Cairo Egyptian Museum. And we have here the Sinai Serebit El Kadin Hathor Cave Stelis, the um, columns, the stone columns with the inscriptions. Now the Hathor Temple at Serebit El Kadim, according to Bible origins, in the southern Sinai, to the south of the temple lies Gebel, Seredit El Kadim, Gorabi, and Saniya. And it says here, I have proposed that Gorabi might preserve Mount Horeb. So it could be that this area was the ex exact area of Mount Horeb, uh, or the rock of Horeb at Refidim, and that Refidim might be Serebit El Kadim, while Mount Sinai might be Gebel Sinia. Uh, proto Sinaitic stone tablets or stele have been found in association with Egyptian mining camps in the area of this temple. I understand that Judeans at the Faran Oasis, Byzantine Far Faran, Biblical Paran, in the 8th to 9th centuries BC may have visited the Serebit El Kadim area and noting these inscriptions were inspired to create a story of Israel's worship of the golden calf and Moses destruction of the Ten Commandments. So this area obviously must have been known by Moses. Um, he was a prince of Egypt, and uh, obviously uh, he was in, in charge. He was also the prince of uh, Ethiopia. So he must have known about all these very uh, significant mining uh, and industrial complexes in Sinai, which was part of their kingdom. So it said that um, Serbit El Kadim, this area here in Faran, according to inscriptions, were inspired to create the story of Israel's worship of the golden calf and Moses' destruction of the Ten Commandments. According to Egyptian myths, Hathor, the cow sky goddess, gave birth to the sun each day as a golden calf. So uh, perhaps that's why the Israelites made a statue of the golden calf which in the area is believed to have been, you know, the, the cow sky goddess of the area. Pharaoh in Old Kingdom Pyramid, a text called himself the golden calf born of heaven, Hathor being heaven as a sky cow goddess, and implored Hor, the Greek Horus, to let him ride every morning the sacred solar bark or boat that carried the sun god across the heavens. Festivals were, were held in Hathor's honor, involving singing, dancing, drunkenness, and even on occasion nudity. Perhaps these cultic rites associated with Hathor at Serbit El Kadim, uh, in other words, the uh, Mount of Horeb, were transformed into Israelis, uh, Israel's worship of the golden calf while Moses was uh, uh, getting the Ten Commandments. The temple possesses possessed votives to Hathor bearing proto sinaitic inscriptions revealing that the Asiatic miners had no problem equating Hathor with their god, gods and goddesses. Perhaps the Asiatic miners honored, uh, honoring um, of Egyptian gods, Soptu and Hathor, became transformed into Israel honoring the golden calf? Question mark. The temple began as two calves to the viewer's left dedicated to Hathor and Soptu, Hathor was the goddess of miners who mined turquoise, malachite, and copper. She was also the goddess who received the dead into the underworld via a cave in the side of the mountain to the west of the Nile. She is frequently portrayed with her head or body emerging from the cave in the western mountain, receiving the dead into the underworld. Sabdu was a warrior god associated with Per Sabdu, modern Saft el Hene in the eastern delta at the west end of Wadi Tumilat. He protected Egypt's eastern roads from invasion by uh, Asiatics and was called Bull that tramples the Menti nomads of the east and he's portrayed in Asiatic garb. So this seems to be the area of uh, Sinai's Mount Horeb where Mount uh, 
the Mount, Mount Sinai area of where the prophet Moses during the Exodus received the Ten Commandments. And this could very well be the area of where the Israelites created the statue of the golden calf and uh, because of that cult uh, did the festivals held in the honor of uh, Hor Hathor's golden calf where they um, had the revelry of singing and dancing and uh, all, all, the, all that went with it and when Moses came down from the mountain saw the Israelites um, uh, having a festival with this uh, statue of the golden calf that they had created. In other words, they were doing what the people of that area were doing. So this is um, in the monatomic gold. The, the powers of monatomic gold, um, uh, they say that monatomic gold holds an unbelievable power because it aligns the cell in a way that they can absorb enormous amounts of light energy which helps to dissolve blockades and imbalances and ingesting five, uh, 0 0.5 to 1 grams are dissolved in approximately 1 liter of mineral water or tea drunk over the course of the day. Well, we know that the ancient Israelites uh, cooked it uh, and that even the, the fire could not destroy it. Uh, the only thing that could sort of melt it away was the uh, rays of the sun. That's why the Israelites had to come out before the um, before dawn to collect it, and they would collect four liters per per person um, every day except Saturday. On Friday, the day of preparation, they would collect two um, two portions, one for Friday, one for Saturday, and they would cook them into cakes and uh, digest the monatomic gold, or as you say, manna. Digest the mana that way, but I'm saying, sorry, I equated monatomic gold with mana because I had just listened to something, I had read something uh, saying that it could be that the mana was monatomic gold. But we know that, that the mana was sent by God in order to keep the Israelites alive, and it was a symbol of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us this day our daily bread. The bread, of course, is the bread of life, um, which is. Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, meaning uh, the Holy Eucharist on a daily basis. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.